Today, I've got a really simple project for you. We're going to make our own miniature display stands and paint racks. Hey everyone, Gabriel with Gabriel's Hobby Studio here. So what you're going to need today is some kind of board, a straight edge, a knife, hobby knife, hot glue, and an empty Pringles can or other kind of cardboard tube. For the particular piece that I'm working on today, I'm just going to be removing this one edge so that way I can get rid of the beveled corners on the end and I can have straight pieces to cut from here forward. What I found after measuring different size paint bottles and the sizes of different miniature bases, any of the standard sizes will fit on a strip that is an inch and a half thick. So I'm just going to cut all of my strips out to an inch and a half, and that way anything aside from extra large bases will fit on there. A quick note before you start cutting, you're going to want to make sure that you measure the space that you're going to put these in first, so that way you can have your strips to the right length. You'll definitely save yourself some time cutting later. I didn't measure mine first and had to go back in and cut each strip individually down to size. It's just faster if you figure that out at the beginning and make one cut instead of a ton of small cuts. Now we're going to repeat the step cutting out an inch and a half strips until we have six strips and we can make a three tier display. With all of our strips cut out, we're then going to take the cardboard tube and cut out an inch and a half section of it to create the inside of the structure. That will hold everything up. For mine today, I'm going to be using an old Pringles can for this, but you can use anything from a toilet paper roll, paper towel roll, or those tubes that come inside of tin foil and saran wrap. Honestly though, you could use cardboard, foam core, plastic corrugated sheeting, just as long as whatever you have on the inside will help the whole thing stay together and not buckle with the weight of the minis on it. Because the Pringles can is so large in diameter, I will actually need to break this up into three different pieces. That is actually really convenient in this case because I can cut the one segment out into three sections that will support an entire row, and the same for each subsequent level, just at different heights. If you're using something with an overall smaller diameter, then you may need to cut out several pieces at each length. For the strip material that I'll be using is the backer that comes with cube displays you can get from those big box office stores that blocks out some of those cube sections. It's actually just the same as chipboard. You remember a little bit ago when I mentioned about measuring the space that you're going to put these in first before you start cutting your strips? Yeah, I got ahead of myself and I didn't do that. <sighs> So now that everything fits, we'll go ahead and hot glue the convex end of the tube to the back side of the board. That way we can then start attaching all these pieces. When putting these on, you'll want to make sure that it's flush both on the top of the strip and on the bottom of the strip. The next thing that you'll want to do is, after the glue is dried, put a bead of hot glue along the top edge of those curved pieces, and then put your next strip on top of that. That's going to make the first step. Because mine are going to be for displays on my shelf, I want to make sure that everything here lines up properly. I'm going to go back in and reinforce those areas with a little bit of hot glue to make sure they stick. For your next piece, you're going to want to measure and cut out a 3 inch segment of your cardboard cylinder. For me, again, I'm just cutting this into 3 pieces and that'll make all the structure I need along the length of the strip. It may look a little backwards here at the moment, but it'll make more sense in once I go to attach this level to the previous tier. But what you're going to want to do from here on is each tier is going to be assembled upside down. So that way you're using the table that you're working on to flush up the structure to the edge of the strip. That way when we turn this thing over, the top is flush so we can put on the next step. And then we can work on attaching the tier to the first one. But before you go to attach that to the next tier, let's go ahead and put on that second step. Again, we're going to run a bead of hot glue over the cylinder pieces and then attach this to that next tier. 
I didn't realize this because I didn't plan this out ahead of time, but a standard size Pringles can will actually do all three tiers. With that one can, you first remove the metal bottom of the cylinder and you take an inch and a half segment out of that. Then your three inch segment. And finally, your last piece is going to be four and a half inches. That means that that final cut line runs right underneath of that silver rim at the top of the can. Before moving on to the final tier, let's go ahead and attach the first and second tiers together. I'm just going to put down a very thin bead of hot glue just to get them stuck together. This is not going to be the final glue that keeps it together, but will give it enough strength so that way I can reinforce it in a moment. For me personally, because I might be putting metal models on these, I'm just going to reinforce the first and second tiers a little bit to prevent them from squeezing out of alignment. I'm just taking little cutoff pieces and making L brackets essentially. I'm cutting out a rectangular piece and then scoring the back of that uh, chipboard so that way I can then bend it right on that cut line. You're going to want to repeat the same process as the other two tiers for attaching the cylinder pieces. We're not going to attach that final step yet. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure that everything is put together and those L brackets are in place first, so that way it's easier to make sure that that last seam is made solidly. After the last face is on there and we're sure that it's stable, we can then go ahead and attach the top and final step on this tier. If the backside is never going to see the light of day, then you can go ahead and put a couple of legs like I'm doing here in the back to help solidify the entire structure and prevent it from rocking or buckling. But if it is going to sit out where the sides are visible and that's something that you don't want to see is the internal structure, you can always make little cutouts by tipping the thing on its side to make an exact profile of each step and then glue those on. Alright, so let's bring that camera in closer now so we can see how well this holds all those minis and our paint bottles. I've put down a couple of different sets of miniatures with different size bases, and this inch and a half is plenty of space for anything in the 25, 28, or 32 millimeter scale bases. Anything in your D&D range of medium size will fit on here just fine. There's also a P3 paint bottle and a bottle from Citadel's contrast line here which I believe is the same size as their other paint bottles. You've got gold and fluid acrylics along with some acrylic inks that all fit on here just fine. If you have done this before and you think you have some ideas on how to make it better, please let us know in the comments below so that way both myself and everyone else who watches the video can have those pro tips as well. By leaving a comment below, you'll not only be helping all of us that see this video, but you'll also be helping me and the channel in making sure that the YouTube algorithms know that this is good content to share with other people. You can join me on my Facebook page. There's a link in the description below. Now, if you did enjoy this content and you would like to see more, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I post new content. As always, have fun, be creative, and happy hobbying.